it's now time for our main event. A former champ against a hopeful contender. Mike Stewart goes by the nickname No Joke, and as many opponents have found out against his regional favorite, he doesn't stray from that title. This aggressive, offensive-minded seven-year pro has worked his way through the road of 140-pounders with success. The lone blemish, this Friday night fight against the very active Doran Spivey. Since then, Mike has won four fights in a row. Last August, he was here in Atlantic City, and he was able to take down Brad Jensen. In October, a cut and bloodied Stewart scored a knockdown and a unanimous decision over Mike Davis. Most recently, he was at his best in front of his hometown fan base, destroying the previously streaking Chucky e. T. The seventh round TKO was a statement from Stewart that it's time to move upward and onward. And if he gets a W tonight, he wants to target a list of prime contenders. Ring Magazine's top junior welters is a dream menu of selections for Stewart to bite into. You want to start at the top, Casa Zoo. Then, then you want to start where the money begins. Gaddy, Leha, Ricky Hatton. I mean, all those fights are, you know, are fights that I've been asking for. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, I'm 25 years old. I got 35 fights. I got a good record. And, uh, and uh, I mean, why, why wouldn't I be able to get one of those fights? So Ron Millette knows what it's like to top big names. Back in 99, he was on top of the world. As noteworthy as his wins are, just as much can be said about who he has lost to. The big three is Bay Mitchell, Zab Judah, and Arturo Gotti, plus the then hot prospect Ricardo Williams. They're the only four to overtake the well-accomplished St. Louis native. Saran's lone title defense came in the summer of 99. He tagged Virgil McClendon, the one-loss southpaw, in the second round and kept up a busy pace throughout. McClendon was his high watermark, and Arturo Gatti would have him feeling down in the dumps. It was a year and a half ago, and it started Gatti's latest run to Glove Gory. He put him down in the third and fought him twice more in the fourth with big gombos. So having seen most of the best the division has to offer, Tehran has a much different view of Mike Stewart. One which truly isn't no joke. I don't begin to think of him. I mean, he doesn't impress me. I mean, to me, he's a typical right hand fighter. Uh, just comes at you and tries to slug. But for some reason, it doesn't seem like he hits hard. But he tries to slug. I don't understand that scenario. You slow, but you don't hit on. Hmm. So now it's up to Mike Stewart to prove himself against the former champ, while it's the former champ who may just prove to himself that tonight could be the end. So you may retire right after this. Right, this man. So if that's true, this is the last time that he will be introduced. Teron Millett will turn 35 years old tomorrow, full 10 years older than his opponent. 27-4-1, 19 knockouts. The losses to Gaddy and Ricardo Williams sandwiched an eight-round split decision over Damone Wright, and that's a fighter who has 17 losses. Teddy's tips for Teron Millett. Well, number one, if Millett's going to try to get back on track towards that championship category he once had, we know you have power, but jab to set it up. Don't make it easy for the less experienced Stewart by just throwing big shots one at a time. Set them up with the left hand. And number two, Stewart will box, so hit the body. Slow him down. Stewart will probably show respect for your power, especially early, by moving a little. So that must mean that you have to go downstairs and take those legs away. Bang to the body. And finally, finish with the left hook. You have big power in the right hand, we know that. But don't depend on one shot. Come back with the hook. Put them together. Stewart has a good chin. Now, Teron Millett says this may be his last fight. The only thing he wants is a rematch with Gotti or a title shot. But other than that, he says he is leaving the fight game. Mike Stewart comes from nearby Dover, Delaware. He trains over in Philly. 25-year-old father of two little girls. He's 31, 32, 1, and 2. He has 16 knockouts. 
His last five, you'll see plenty of work in front of the home fans and about 700 co-workers, family, and friends. You can hear them right now because they bought tickets to see him here in Atlantic City at the drop tonight. Teddy's tips for no joke. Well, Stuart, if you're going to keep moving forward and try to get to the big time, show your boxing ability, not just your toughness. We know you can come forward, but with a big punch in front of you tonight, let's see you use the ring and your jab to keep Mallet off bounds. And number two, stay off the ropes. Never. Never give a big banger a chance to trap you in one spot for too long because all it takes is one lazy moment. And number three, test his endurance late. There's been rumors, I've been hearing things, that Millet's weight had gone up high and he took it off late. That could weaken him as the night goes on. Plus, he's not young. So push him in the later rounds with a little more pressure if you see him slowing down. And use that left hook to okay, the body. gentlemen, you're both familiar with the rules. They've been thoroughly gone over. I want you to remember two things. Obey my commands, but most importantly, protect yourselves at all times. Now shake hands and come out of the belt. Randy Newman, the referee, scheduled for 12. Teddy, Mike Stewart told us, he said, I'm going to put pressure on him. He says, beating a world champ is great, and I need that trophy in my trophy case. The question I have for you, how much of a trophy is Teron Millett at this point? Well, it's a good question. Millett obviously is not the fighter that he showed himself to be when he knocked out Vince Phillips. Then again, Vince Phillips wasn't at his best either. Vince Phillips had had a lot of trouble with weight and was weakened at that point. But Millet has not shown himself at top form recently, but it's still a good trophy, and it's a good confidence builder, and that's all you want to do. You want to show good on TV, and you want to build your fighter up inside himself so he can become a better fighter. He's, I've watched ordinary guys, guys that didn't look like they were going anywhere real high. They start to get that little breath, that little wind under their wings of confidence. All of a sudden, they become a much better fighter. So what matters is what Stewart thinks. And Stewart thinks he's got a former world champ in front of him. And if he dispatches of him, he's going to feel pretty darn good. And so are his people. Stewart has to be careful now. He doesn't walk into a big shot. Because right now, it's youth, and Stewart, 25 years old, against a veteran, 34-year-old Millet. It's youth, it's will, conditioning against power. If you're Stewart, you don't want to give Millet a chance, especially early, when he's still fresh, to land one of those big shots. Straight right hand from No Joe. Comes back right with it. You're going to see a lot of jabs and right hands from No Joe Stewart. Because he's pretty standard. He tries to do things technically fairly solid. He's pretty standard. He's going to use a jab, trying to set up that straight right hand. And when he's close, he's going to do what you saw him do a minute ago. Use that left hook. That conventional standard left hook to the body. There's that right hand again. And there's the left hook to the body from Stewart. Back to the body. When you fight a former world champion, especially a 34-year-old former world champion who has power, one thing you old-timers would say is you don't want them to start to think that they can get back to that form for one night. Stewart's trying to make sure that that doesn't go in the mind of Millet. Early on, Stewart is trying to make Millet feel old and like a former world champion from long ago. Third not, time that he has scored with that right hand here in this first round. Well, that's what he does. Use the jab to set up, and then he bangs the hook to the bottom. But very important to start here for Stewart. Not allowing Millet to start to think that he can charge it up for one night. Maybe more importantly, not allowing Millet to think that he's got an ordinary guy in front of him who's just been a well-navigated guy. He's letting Millet know he's got a guy who's young, and a guy who wants to go somewhere. And a guy who has something to deal with. Good opening stanza for no joke, Mike Stewart. Bottom right hand corner. Stewart does it by the book. Uses the jab to set up the straight right hand. And then he comes back to the body right there under the elbow with the left hook. Those are the two best friends of Stewart. The right hand and the left hook to the body. Round number two, Mike Stewart against the former world champion, Teron Millet, punches in round one. 16 of those 19 landed for no joke Stewart with power shots. 
Stewart got what he wanted, so that first round. The respected performance champ and the downward spiral of the mind of the former champion. That he's not going to get young tonight on Stewart's account. Stewart has to make sure he doesn't get careless now. Because the one thing that Millet has, I don't think Millet's going to win a decision. He's not going to be busy enough. I don't know if he has the, the endurance to keep a pace up with Stewart. But he has that power. So it's up to Stewart not to let Millet get that one shot in. Teddy, what about the fact that in Tehran Millet, you have a guy who is talking about his imminent retirement? That's the mentality of stepping into the ring you when you're one, sizing up. When you're saying that, Joe, that's a real good point. The old-timers would say, you already got one foot out the door. You're already thinking about leaving. So if you get a little help from your opponent, and Stu's trying to give him all the darn help he can give him to go out that door, you know what? The door's halfway open already. Like pushing a sled downhill, as Mike Stewart does just that now in the second round. Great work with the left hand. Not only great work with the left hand, great upstairs and downstairs work. Not just going headhunting. Where Millet did, Spears Millet would dip a little bit, try to leave an opening when something comes at the head, makes Stewart leave himself open. Stewart's going downstairs, where the body is right in front of him, freezing Millet. Not allowing him to get away from the second shot. Every time Stewart mixes something upstairs, he comes back downstairs. That's a good, good fundamental habit to be in. Kudos to his people. That's one of the great things that Julio Chavez, the former great world champion, used to do. He would never let four or five shots go without going downstairs and dropping one off to the body. You watch him, and you could really set your clock by the fact that Julio Cesar Chavez, he would throw a couple to the head, and then one would go back downstairs. Little short left hand caught Millet moments ago. Awkward footing, but it got him. Another strong round for Mike Stewart. Bottom right-hand corner, we were talking about right hand, and then left hook back to the body. Now, if that looks like a replay was familiar from earlier in the night, a round ago, it's not. It's a different round, but it's the same punches because, as we said, Stewart is very dependable, very conventional, very standard, and he sticks to what works best. Right now, right hand to the head, left hook to the body. He's being consistent. Give him credit. You know, Joe, you talked about Millet having one foot out the door. When you start talking about retirement, you can be convinced sometimes to retire right in the ring. You're already thinking about that that is allowable. That is an option. Another thing Millet is having trouble with, he's lost a lot of weight. I don't know how strong he is, and I don't know how strong he's feeling right now. And a right hand floored him here in the first minute of this third round. Too much time left for Millet to, to be able to survive. And the former fighter, the referee Randy Newman, he looks into the eyes of Millet, realizes how much time's left, and he does the right thing. He waves it off. Millet has taken punishment all night long. And at this point in this round, he was going to take more. Good job by the ref. 57 seconds of round number three. Well, Millet's lost two of his last three, now three of his last four. Probably going to retire. And the night was too short to get into it. I was just touching on it, but Millet, from the rumors I heard, had to lose a lot of weight for this fight. And Stewart, well, Stewart did the right thing. He took advantage of all those elements the element that he was talking about retirement the element that he lost a lot of weight he might be weak he went to the body put pressure on got the job done good job by stewart good step up for stewart something to build on he looked sharp right from the beginning in that first round some good straight right hands even better work to the body and then in round number four all night long. And round number three comes up with the right hand. All night long, the right hand was working for him. Being set up by the jab. Now, someone's going to say, well, that jab didn't land. It closed the gap. It blinded Millet. Watch. It closed the gap. It allowed Stewart to inch his way in carefully, safely, and then bang with the right hand. 
So the jab doesn't have to land all the time to be effective. That time, it distracted Millette. It closed the gap for Stewart. And it allowed that right hand, which was landing all night long, to finish the job. Mike Stewart, third round knockout of Teron Millette. Stewart now moves to 33, one and two. Brian and Max, he said he wanted his trophy a world champ. He now has his trophy with the win over Teron Millette. Uh, you know, certainly not a shocking uh, result there, Max, and we've talked about it. We've we were ringside for uh, Teron Millette against Arturo Gatti, and, and he didn't look good there. At that point, you could even see that this guy would be better being out of boxing at some point. Could still handle himself, but those guys can get hurt. We talk about it all the time, like almost a concussed syndrome, like uh, we saw it with David Reed, we've seen it with others. Uh, Bennett, we saw it recently. Millette should retire. Look, after the Gaddy fight, you can say, oh, Gaddy's looked so much better in recent fights, you can't hold that too much against him. Look, he went the distance with Ricky Williams, Millette did. No, no. Millette, this is it for him, he should retire. And again, we don't say this because you, you, we don't like him. Boxing fans say this because they love Teron Millette. He's had a very exciting career. He's always come off very, very, in a very charming way. And you like him, like when Boom Boom Johnson fought Jesus Chavez on our rear. Not because we don't like him, but because we do like him. No more, that's it. And anyone who puts Teron Millette in any fight at this point, promoter, television, manager, should be held accountable. It's completely irresponsible. That should be it for Teron Millette. At the age of 34, there's no future in it for him and not enough money to risk his life uh, in the ring. We take a short break here on Friday Night Fights. Uh, Mike Stewart gets the win. He's only got one loss in his career as a professional. We'll be back to hear from the winner of tonight's main event when we come back. Welcome back to the Tropicana Casino and Resort in Atlantic City, New Jersey, where many fight fans from Dover, Delaware, made the ride up, and we're very pleased to see this. Third round, big right hand from Mike No Joke Stewart as he comes up with a knockout win over former champion of the world, Teron Millette. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas now joined by Mike No Joke Stewart. Mike, you had to feel real good about that. I did feel real good about it, Joey. Uh, what makes me feel good is people coming out and uh, supporting me. Uh, you know, it was a big fight for me. I'm dedicating this fight to my uh, trainer and my uncle, Mike Ashley, and uh, Curtis and Lee, who both died uh, preparing for this fight, and uh, Mike Copeland, uh, Providence, Rhode Island. But, you know, they're going to say, okay, you beat Teron Millette now. Now who are you going to fight? And, uh, uh, you know, I, I want to fight Arturo Gatti. I mean, he knocked him out in four, I knocked him out in three. Uh, but, you know, if we can't get him, Jesse James Leha, maybe spat a forward if he comes up. I mean, Daddy, you know, you know the fight game. What do you think? Hey, listen, Arturo, I love Arturo, love Mickey Ward, love all those guys. You've been in the same position that this kid's been in. Give him a shot. Somebody give him a shot. One of you guys out there, give him a shot. He's earned it. He beat a former world champion. He wants to show his wares. You know he makes pleasing fights. Go ahead, give him a shot. Hey, all right, Mike Stewart, congratulations on your win tonight. Brian and Max, he has something in common now with Sharmbe Mitchell, Zab Judah, Arturo Gatti, and Ricardo Williams. He gets his win over Teron Millette. Stewart now 33-1-2 with 16 KOs. Brian and Max.